going to do with this one. It's going to make a little bit longer video, but these are all kind of related problems and hope you'll see why. So in this first set, which is kind of weird, we just want to rewrite each into an equivalent form. Uh, so when talking about writing each into an equivalent form, well, you got to realize we have the distribution property. We're not asking you to evaluate. We're not asking you to solve simply to rewrite, which is why those problems like EFGH are going to look kind of weird. But if you kind of understand what we mean by rewrite, not an impossible problem to do. So here's kind of the deal. When you see this 3 on the outside of these parentheses, we're saying we need to multiply this 3 to everything inside the parentheses. Multiply it to the 2 and multiply it to the 5. That's what the distribution property is all about. So in, in terms of writing that out, we just have to show that. So we're going to take this 3 times this 2, and we're going to take this 3 times a 5, and then because we want the result to be added, we'll have an addition sign, and that is literally it. We just want to, sh you just need to just demonstrate to us that you know the number on the outside gets multiplied to everything on the inside separately. Let's try another one. Uh, so this is kind of the reverse of it. So there is a number that's been multiplied to two different things that belong in parentheses. Uh, so if you look in, we got this repeated two. So this repeated two ends up on the outside. And we have this one and nine ending up on the inside in addition. So if you look at these two problems side by side, you can kind of see how they're kind of flipping around. We had the three on the outside, give me your highlighter, uh, that's being multiplied to everything on the inside, and now we have this repeated two that we're going to pop on the outside. So this kind of distribution, reverse distribution, um, it's a weird kind of idea to think about, but um, now if you can do that, taking to the next step or using variables should be a lot easier. All right, let's take a look at this guy. All right, so we have this negative six on the outside, we have this nine and ten on the inside, notice that's being subtracted now. Uh, but again, it's all about distributing, multiplying that neg negative 6 to everything on the inside. So we have this negative 6 times a 9 for the first part. We have a negative 6 times a 10 on the inside. Notice it's a 10, not a negative 10, because it, the negative sign is actually going to show up right here. Okay. So I know some things we can do to evaluate, to clean it up, combine uh, negative signs and stuff, but we're not asking you to do that at all. All we're asking you to do is to simply rewrite it so it is equivalent and leave it at that. All right, let's move on to D. Uh, so repeated element, we have this 2 and then we have another 2. And before you say, hey, wait, Mr. Collins, that's a negative 2? Not quite the case. That negative is going to show up somewhere else and you'll see why in a second. So check it out. We have a 2 and we have a 2. That's repeated on the outside. We have two numbers on the inside. We have a negative 3 and then we have a 7. This subtraction sign is going to show up right there. So the sign in the middle linking the two terms together is actually going to show what that thing is inside the parentheses. Um, don't attach it to that number on the outside. Not exactly wrong if you do it, just not really the case in terms of rewriting. All right, so check out this. Uh, just because we have variables, no numbers, doesn't mean that we're going to do something different. If you look at the problem directly above it, uh, we have this 2 that's been repeated each time. Uh, so just like that, we have an m that's repeated each time. So that's going to go on the outside of the big parentheses. Combined on the inside, we have two elements. We have n and we have p. And then they'll be subtracted. Okay? So fully variable expression, but if you can do this one, you have a very good understanding of what it's like to transfer between distribution and reverse distribution. I just realized, I, I, th I think, yeah, I did skip one. So I'm going to go back to this first one. And again, we're going to use the problem above it as a guide. So we have this 3 on the outside multiplied to everything on the inside. We'll do that the same thing here. We have this a times everything on the inside. So we're going to have a times b, and we're adding a times c. So again, we're not asking you whatsoever to uh, to evaluate or to combine or even know what the end number is going to be, which is a kind of shifting in your thinking from what you're used to. Uh, so we're just asking you to evaluate, or not to evaluate, excuse me, just to rewrite into an equivalent form, and we've accomplished that here. Uh, here's another example. Uh, just like the one above it, we have this A, and we're multiplying to the B and the C, and then subtracting the result. So the first one here, bam, we're going to have A and B. Then we're going to have A times C, and then we're going to subtract the two results, one from the other. Moving on to H. Okay, we got this X, we got this X. That's the repeated. That will go on the outside. Inside, we have the Y, and we have the W. Subtracted. Boom. Bob's your uncle. So the reason why I want to combine these with the ones at the bottom is because they are very similar. Um, in, in the sense, especially for the area, the perimeter is a little different. We're just collecting like terms. Uh, but let me show you what I mean. So the first thing we should probably do, acknowledging that this is a rectangle, is to fill in the side lengths that aren't marked. So we have a 3 and we have a 4x. 
Now in terms of perimeter, which we can do first, uh, the perimeter is basically just saying, if I were to stand on the, like the beginning corner here and then walk all the way around the shape, how far have I walked? Well, if I'm walking this distance, I've walked a 4x distance. Um, if I've walked this distance, I've walked three more. If I've walked this distance, I've walked a 4x more. And then if I've walked this distance, I've walked three more. And that also gets me to the very end. Now this becomes an issue of combining like terms. So like terms of those have the same variable or the same non-variable in some cases. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually go through and just highlight the ones that should go together. So those two should go together because they both have an x. These should go together because, well, frankly, they're both numbers. Both big three head really has nothing to do with that. Um, they're just both numbers. Um, so when you combine these, well, look, I have 4x here, and then I'm going to add 4 more x's. That's going to make an 8x. Uh, here's a 3. Here's 3 more. That'll be plus 6. So the perimeter in this case is represented by 8x plus 6. Don't freak out that it's not a number. You had parts that you didn't know in the square above anyway, and you didn't know the x before. You don't know the x now. That's going to be okay. We have one more piece to do, which is going to be the area. I'm going to say green. Okay. So the area in this case is going to be length times width. Well, that's just going to be length and width, so we're looking at 3 times a 4x. Now, in this particular case, you don't need distribution, but there is something you can do. If I have 3 4x's, that actually is going to make 12x's. 3 times 4 being, of course, 12. Okay, but if you notice the way I said that, it also gives you an indication that the, you can also think about it logically. Uh, I have a group of 4x's here. I have 3 groups of 4x's. Three groups of four x's make twelve x's. All right, let's look at the next one. Uh, same thing first. Before I do anything else, I'm going to go ahead and label the pieces. I don't know. We have x plus three, and of course x. Uh, and now we're just going to jump into it. Let's talk about perimeter. Okay, so perimeter is walking all the way around. So I walk this distance. That's an x. I walk this distance. That's a x plus three. Uh, this distance gives me a plus another x, and then to finish it up, I have another x plus 3. So I'm just going to add all the terms together, now I'm going to collect like ones. Um, so I know I have parentheses here, I'm fully aware of that fact, but I don't think the parentheses do anything for me. Like, I don't have a negative, I don't have a number that's right outside the parentheses. So, oops. So leave, if taking, getting rid of this parentheses, excuse me, at this step is actually going to be okay. Um, just because there's nothing the parentheses do for me. So in terms of collecting like terms, it looks like I have a few x's here. And then I have a 3 and a 3 making a 6. Okay. Uh, so we have 1, 2, 3, 4 x's. And then 3 and 3 make a 6. That's going to be my perimeter. And then the area is length times width, so length and then width. So we have x and then x plus 3. Uh, so this is where distribution property will come into play. So again, I have a number on the outside. I want to multiply it to everything on the inside. So the first one will be x times x, and then I'll have uh, 3 times x. So now one more step, x times x is going to be x squared, and then we have a plus 3x. That's what I'm going to have for my area. Now, these are not like terms. And that's a common mistake people make, too. They say, well, look, Mr. Collins, they're both an x. But that's not an x. This guy right here is an x squared. Not the same thing. Not a like term for the 3x. We're going to leave it just like it is. Last problem of this video. Uh, we're actually dealing with a special kind of rectangle now. We're dealing with a square. So we can attack this kind of a couple different ways. Um, in terms of the perimeter, well, it's going to just be four of the same thing. So I'm going to try to write this a little differently. I'm going to write this as 4 of the same thing. So uh, 1, 2, 3, 4 sides, they're all 2x. 4 2x's make 8x's, so that's going to be my perimeter. Now if you want to check it the way we did it previously, please do. You'll find you'll have an 8x anyway. Um, now the area of the square, I know is just a side squared. Another way to say that is going to be 2x times 2x. So just like before, we can probably drop the charade of these parentheses. They're not really doing anything for me. Um, oops. Well, 
so what I can do is kind of just drop them and just multiply the pieces separately. So we have this 2 times 2, which is going to make us a 4, with x times x, which is going to make us an x squared. So the area is going to equal 4x squared. Cool? Cool. All right, let's get rolling. Uh, so that's the first set. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, that's the last set of this, this particular video. So that's 4 and 5. I will see you guys again in problem 6.